Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thank you, Ali Sanjabi, A.B. Puppy, Dale Mulcahy, and our new patron, Tom, with an H. Hey, I like that spelling, Tom. On this episode of DTNS, the truth about Tesla's cyber cab, Steam comes clean about what you buy from them, and Patrick Norton helps you prepare ahead of a disaster, natural or otherwise. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, the 11th of October. Spooky. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. At the edge of the 314, I'm Patrick Norton. Drawing the top tech stories in Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. You know, we're all in uh, great sports situations right now. The Blues are undefeated in the one-game-old <laughs> hockey season <laughs> over there in St. Louis. Uh, Cleveland, of course, uh, you know, on the edge of, of heading to the of League Championship Series yes, in baseball. Yes. Uh, same for the Dodgers here, where Roger and I are. So, yeah. Uh, happy sports ball, everyone. Let's do it. You know, I said sports ball the other day and somebody got mad. They're like, that's that's condescending. And I'm I'm like, but but I like sports. Yeah. yeah if I say it in the voice I use, that's condescending. <laughs> that's condescending. <laughs> Especially if I. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, get right into the quick hits. Xbox president Bond, Sarah Bond, said on X that it plans to offer the ability to purchase games directly from within the Xbox app on Google's Android starting in November. The promise is a result of a court order for Google to open up its Play Store policies to let app makers offer their own methods of payment. But before you get too excited... I don't know why they're making a big deal of this yet. Google is seeking a stay on that order, and they've got until November 1st to get a stay. I'm going to guess they might get it. Microsoft, however, is also still working on a progressive web app, which Android users could take advantage of for this. Uh, That was planned to launch this summer, but it is still in testing. Meanwhile, the lawyers grow fat. Mm, Quite, Mm. like grubs. (laughs) Wow, speaking of cruel and condescending <laughs> not this story blue sky has been posting updates to an account it created on threads well actually maybe this is a little cruel and condescending to let users know all the features it is launching that threads does not yet have recently blue sky posted on threads that it is now lets you pin posts apply language filters and customize fonts and text sizes yeah text sizes uh and have been posting some condescending maybe not cruel but like uh we're not like all the other girls come come enjoy blue sky threads users uh google has added a quick view button to search results that lets you see the complete recipe from a web page without having to go to that web page and read about how grandma roxy uh used to live in a one-room schoolhouse in the 1800s uh and before you finally get down to the scalloped potatoes recipe uh the reason bloggers do that is because Google (laughs) ranks them higher in search results if they do. So Google created this problem, and now they're giving a solution. Uh, Google representative Brianna Duff told Engadget that it is being done in partnership with a limited number of creators. So it's not going to work for every blog, but apparently the creators are agreeing to this and getting something out of it. As long as Google AI isn't summarizing the recipe, I'm just going to say that. No one said that wasn't happening. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I don't think it's happening. <laughs> Netflix announced on X that John Mulaney will host a new live variety talk show on Netflix in early 2025, adding, that's it. That's all we know. It sounds like what days and times it will go live and anything else about the format, or if there is a format, will be decided at some future point, or at least revealed to us. Netflix has been moving into more live programming while viewers have been moving away from watching live talk shows, and I still am annoyed by any sports that show up in my streaming channels. Just had to editorialize. Wow, you just had to throw that in there unrelated to John Mulaney, who is probably (laughs) also annoyed by that. Uh, No, it's interesting to to do a live talk show while people who do live talk shows are like, yeah, we're not going to be doing these for much longer so i'll be interested to see how that goes thursday officials in taiwan said that four people from taiwan who worked at foxconn factories in mainland china uh in fact foxconn factories that specifically make products for apple were detained by mainland chinese authorities foxconn said it did not suffer any financial losses as a result of the actions of the employees i think they were trying to rule out this being an embezzlement or a certain type of fraud Uh, Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council described the allegations as bizarre and warned that improper detention could hurt investor confidence. Uh, 
China recently toughened rules against promoting Taiwan independence. So a lot of folks suspected maybe it was related to that. Friday, Beijing's Taiwan Affairs Office, so China now, mainland China talking, said the four workers are suspected of bribery. Mm. You do the math because I can't about what that actually might be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it is interesting uh, to watch that unfold. At an event in Burbank, California, on the Warner Brothers lot Thursday, Tesla showed off prototypes of its CyberCab, a vehicle that promises to provide full autonomous driving. Uh, the prototypes were silver sedans with gullwing doors, kind of like a McLaren. Uh, they have no steering wheel, no pedals, no rear window, and no charging port. They are charged through induction, similar to your electronic toothbrush. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, these are prototypes, uh, but they had 20 of them. 20 of them, and they were in operation. They were moving around the movie studio lot, not on freeways or anything, but moving around on their own. Uh, Tesla CEO Elon Musk rode in one of them. Uh, Tesla also showed a prototype autonomous van that would be able to carry up to 20 people. And Tesla demonstrated around 20 of its Optimus humanoid robots. It showed these off before, but it had them in bigger numbers. Uh, those are things that actually happened, okay? <laughs> that Those are indisputable, like, People were there. They verified that stuff happened. Here are the promises that may or may not happen. They might. They might not. Uh, Musk said he intends to sell the cars for $30,000 or less. Suggest buyers might want to have several of them so they could rent them out to give other people rides. That's okay. kind of the business model that he's going for with these is cars sit around not doing anything, but an autonomous car can be out carrying people all the time. Tesla wants to provide its own version of a service that would do that. Uh, if you were to use Tesla to rent out your car, they would take a cut of the revenue. New, of course. Uh, Musk also promised that unsupervised full self-driving should be available on the Model 3 and Model Y Teslas in Texas and California sometime next year, which would be before the CyberCab goes into production, and suggested the CyberCab might go into production before 2027, but admitted he is, quote, highly optimistic with timeframes. So uh, that's, to say the least, uh, the time frame is probably the one I'm least confident will stay stick around. <laughs> the price point might stick around. Everything else is Cyber at least in the truck for yeah. Tom's incredulity on that. So full self-driving, this means the I can set it to take me to, I don't know, Tijuana and fall asleep and the car will basically drive yeah. me. Asleep level safely. level four, there is no steering wheel and no pedals in these things because you don't need them. Level four does it all for you. Huh. These are not this level three where you have to be around. You don't have to pay attention, but you have to be around because there might they might go into a situation where it doesn't have maps or something. That's level three. Level four is doesn't matter what the situation is, it can drive you there. And just to double check my my fuzzy memory on this, no one has actually achieved level four full self-driving that they let on the streets, right? Mm, that they let on the streets is an important part of that. I don't okay. think so I want to hedge that because there might be some limited tests that have been allowed here and there that are clicking around in the back of my mind. But no, there are no like you can go out and buy a level four autonomous car right now. OK, there's some level threes that are just starting to happen. Uh, Highly optimistic. Most of what you see are level two or what they call 2.5, where you have to pay attention all the time, but it can do the driving as long as you're paying attention. Level three is, is like I said, like you might not have to pay attention all the time. And Mercedes has one of those. And I think uh, GM is in the process of being able to bring one to market. It has been fascinating watching this stuff slowly come into reality because I feel like everybody said we would be doing level four a couple years ago, and that just has not happened. Um, well, the Waymos uh, are are level four, but you can't buy them, right? So you also can no longer drive them in the streets of San Francisco, but I'm not going to be that cruel. <laughs> we have them in L.A. They go all over the place. Uh, but they are in a limited area. Right. So, you know, you're, you're not, I, I'm not able to pick them up in my area, but Sarah Lane is in her area. Uh, so yeah, to your point, we are slowly seeing progress in this. Uh, I, I was prepared 
to look at this and put it in our quick hits section as Tesla said some things, we'll see if they're true, right. uh, but they did more than that. I, I wanna give Tesla credit for having working prototypes on a Hollywood lot, granted, well, a Burbank lot, uh, but on you know, on a movie studio lot. Uh, so, so these are not the most challenging place uh, to work, but they worked. Right. At least within the context of a short demo moving around a few hundred yeah, yards yeah, yeah. in a closed space next to people who do things like dinosaurs coming to life. <laughs> let me, let me just say, my control. expectations were lower than that for this announcement. So I was pleased Did to they, see that there were actual products. I have not seen the announcement yet. Did they actually have full-size models of the fascinating Art Deco streamlined space bus? Uh, would... Yeah, I believe they had one, 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 wow. spa one space bus. I well, I mean, I look at that and I think it really looks like a you know early twentieth century uh, train design. And seeing one of those come down the street would be like this surreal and terrifying mix of, oh my goodness, that's so cool, and oh my goodness, you know, something from you know space is coming to eat my face. Um, yeah. I, I, the, the uh, I was talking with my wife, uh, Eileen, about this, and she's like, the thing that got her was him showing the stadium parking lot going away and being replaced by green space. Because you ha if you have enough autonomous cars, they can always be out moving people around and they don't need to be parked. They don't need to just be sitting there. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, this isn't a guarantee that that will happen, but that would be nice. I would like that if that were to come true. I'm just thinking about stadium parking and just biting my tongue. We should probably move to the next segment. <laughs> oh, well, you don't you don't want to get rid of stadium parking? I'm not saying well you will, but I'm just thinking of four and a half hours congestion for everyone around LA Stadium or the That's Dodger why you stadium. got the twenty person bus. So you just keep those people moving. Uh trust me, I know. I've been there. uh Ahead of a California law restricting when you can use the word buy with digital items, if you missed this story, uh, it basically says you either don't use the word buy or you have to disclose what the restrictions are on mm -hmm. your digital item if there are any. If you're giving an undrm digital item that people can do whatever they want with, you can just use buy without an explanation. Well, Steam... Ahead of that going into effect, like the legislation's passed, but it is not right. It is not actually, you know, they gave people time to adjust to this. Steam went ahead and started uh, putting a notice up during checkout that says a purchase of a digital product grants a license for the product on Steam. So you don't own it. Uh, in a related news, bit of Steam news, uh, Steam Deck arriving in Australia. So our Australian listeners, uh, you'll be able to order a, a Steam Deck domestically uh, without having to import it starting in November. And then Boing Boing had an article about an effort to get Fedora Asahi Remix, which is a Linux distro, working on Apple Silicon so you can use Steam to play AAA Windows games on a Mac. Now, those of you saying, I already do that in crossover, I say that's not nearly as fun as using Asahi Remix to do it on your Mac, but sure, you could do that too. You're uh, speechless. No, it's just, it's been, it's, I, I feel like Linux is coming back because like, you know, Canonical was talking about 20 years of Ubuntu this week, you know, AAA titles I, i'm in the process of converting a non-windows 11 ready machine to move to linux because it's just time and uh -huh. I of the hardware and it does have an actual dedicated discrete graphics processor and now i'm like triple oh, a linux titles on linux triple a windows titles on, a linux, windows titles on, linux, on a sorry. mac uh and one of the things that makes that happen is apple silicon yeah. You know, the ARM processors, uh, Apple Silicon's ARM processor implementation is so powerful. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you, you so don't lose fast. that. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still, I've, I've been having some discussions at my place of work with our IT department. I'm like, can we, can we start buying Macs for video editing because less suffering and more performance? And they're like, but Windows. And then I showed but them. But Copilot the Plus. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not saying Copilot Plus. No, no one. they're not. Loves Copilot. Well, actually, if you love Copilot Plus, feel free to reach out to me at Patrick Norton on Twitter. I would love to hear what you're using Copilot for. Yeah. Uh, That's actually really exciting, though, like Linux running Windows titles. I mean, for, for gamers, and I know people who are gamers who, who use Apple gear and maintain a dedicated gaming machine, that would that would be kind of awesome. 
I, before we move on, I know you have thoughts on the idea of making sure people know they're getting a license <laughs> versus a purchase. I promised Tom before the show that I wouldn't go, you know, get off my lawn mode on this one. But I mean, I think it's actually kind of fantastic to acknowledge that, especially given, you know, recently people have been running into cases where, um, you know, video, like basically stuff they thought they bought the company did the math and it's easier to deal with the rage and the anger than it is to keep the, you know, the financial cost of keeping the servers or more importantly, the licenses up and running for that. So it's, it's important to remember, right? Cause people are like, Oh, I can watch it on H, you know, or, well, it's not HBO. It's max. Now I can watch it on max, but max rented it out to someone else so they can make more revenue on it. So I'm going to, you know, if you have a physical copy of something in a physical media, or as Tom pointed out in the beginning, you know, it is sold to you without DRM, then you actually have a copy of it. Everything else, you're borrowing it. And that may not matter to you now, but it may in a few years if licenses or companies or things shift and you don't have access to it. It's just also very strange to realize how tenuous our relationship is to things we pay for. Um, well, I, I think sometimes we get caught up in like, I must own everything because I have always owned everything. And uh, you, you've never owned your electricity. There, there's lots of things you subscribe to, things you, <laughs> you rent. No, I, I, I'll you be laugh, honest but, with you. But I'm saying like, we are fine in certain cases with like, oh, right. No, I rent my apartment. I don't own it. That's fine. Uh, but I still have rights to it. I think as long as we're being honest about this stuff and saying, Hey, you're getting a license. Uh, right. maybe it's, maybe this price is too much for you, but if you're like, you know what, that for that price, uh, just a license that'll let me play it for a while, even if it goes away someday is fine. As long as we go into that, knowing it. And I think that's what this yes. law does. That that's nice. It says, Hey, you're getting a license. You can pay for this license to play this game. It sets your expectations properly. I mean, it, it would also be nice if I would know everywhere someplace is going to sell my information or my activity going into any relationship. That, well, that's a separate service, situation. Right? That's a separate. A separate but but too, I mean, but yeah. I'm also yeah, giggling because yeah, you're like, you know, you know, we rent electricity. Well, we consume electricity, but I've never really heard the difference between the punk rock electricity on the obscure label that doesn't exist anymore, you know, and the, you know, the that's because you don't have solar. <laughs> But it's, I mean, I, I get where you're going. And on one hand, yeah, it doesn't matter. And on the other hand, in some cases, if you actually want to be able to watch a movie or listen to a song, whatever you want to, there are advantages to physical media or access. Absolutely. Owning. And I'm not arguing against that, but I'm saying sometimes we're fine with not owning. Uh, yes. Probably a better example would be cable television. Like we didn't love it, but for years we were fine. Like, yeah, I'll pay in order to get these shows, even though I can't keep them. Uh, and that's more <laughs> of the relationship we're, we're realizing we have with the digital stuff, which is I'm paying to get access to to it for a longer period of time than a live broadcast, but not an indefinite period of time like I would have with a physical object. It also makes me wonder, I mean, you know, there's a couple games I can no longer play that I've bought uh, for, like, for Apple TV because mm -hmm. the company does not want to be bothered to update the game to work on the, the latest version. Right. Operating. That's a separate situation, right? And yeah. It's a separate situation, but it is it is related, right? Because it also makes me wonder if, you know, if Steam is leaning hard and early into posting this, it makes me wonder how they have an advantage of doing that. Like what are what's going to disappear out of my Steam library? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if they'll abuse the privilege uh, or if it's just like we want to make sure we get this in place ahead of time so we yeah. don't have to deal with it. It's not a bad uh, idea. If you have thoughts about this, which I bet you do, you can email us. Our address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, listen, the hurricanes that we've been experiencing in the United States and elsewhere around the world this year uh, are no joke. Um and it is obvious that the cleanup uh, and the recovery from those natural disasters is of paramount importance. Uh, but you may not be affected by them. You may. And if you are, we hope that you're recovering well and can stay safe. But if you're not, you might be affected by a future natural disaster. Could be a tornado, could be something else besides a hurricane. Here we have earthquakes. Or it could just be a personal uh, a situation, and not even a natural disaster at all. It could be a could be a fire or something like that. Uh, there are things you can do now, 
And so in the aftermath of these kinds of situations, it's often a good time to remind yourself, oh, I should probably do those things so that I'm prepared should this ever happen to me. Uh, and Patrick's uh, got a lot of good tips uh, to help us kind of figure out what are the priorities and what are the things we should do to, to keep our data safe ahead of time. What do we got, Pat? Well, I mean, we talk about, you know, backing up data. And one of the things we always talk about um, is to keep a copy offline, right? You know, out of the immediate area. Most of us use that with an online service. It could be keeping a hard drive at somebody else's house, you know, and I, but I started thinking about some of the other things people don't think about after Helene wiped out uh, what a lot of people thought were fairly disaster proof locales like Asheville, North Carolina and other places at higher elevation. Um, my wife grew up in earthquake country. My folks lived in a Jersey shore barrier Island that had, I think 3000 year floods in 20 years. Um, you know, they live in Southern Florida now, so they've had a really exciting week. Um, I've had friends that regularly deal with the threat of wildfires. Um, you know, I am out here in tornado country in the Midwest. Um, and, you know, you might say, I don't live in a natural disaster area. Well, neither did Asheville or Boone, North Carolina, until a few days ago. Um, and I've had at least one family member have their house burned to the ground. So one of the things we think about, people talk about go bags. They talk about, you know, preparing an emergency kit. A lot of people don't think about what happens if you have to evacuate or what happens if, you know, your house, your home, and I really hope it's not as severely damaged. And a lot of people don't think about documents, right? Um, your driver's license, your birth certificates, information on your rental agreement for your house. And, you know, there's, we'll talk more about like what you might want to scan and have available, but these should be in your go bag or stored in a cloud-based service, um, you know, a password protected format on a flash or an external hard drive, uh, you know, you might want that in a fireproof and waterproof box or safe. So you're way. saying the documents themselves should have multiple backups, just like the rest of your data, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's, uh, you know, if you don't like cloud services, maybe you send a copy of, of this to, you know, a family member or a friend, um, you know, it's it, it's nice to have this stuff on your phone. Uh, but remember, if things get really hairy, especially in floods, you might not have access to uh, cell service or Internet or in the case, like I said, of flooding, your phone might get trashed. Um, yeah, right. You know, uh, there's a there's a, a website I want to tell people about. Uh, it's called be ready Utah dot gov. Uh, be ready Utah. They talk about having copies of all your critical documents. One of the things they recommend is like a four by six photo album that oh, goes to your, your emergency kits. Uh, uh -huh. You know, uh, they are really fantastic because they are super handholdy. They walk you through, they talk to you about why this stuff can be really helpful. Um, Ready.gov is another website that's really useful. They also have a copy of FEMA's Safeguard Critical Documents and Valuables PDF, which is a good read for this one. Um, the info we're talking about here, uh, you know, I love Be Ready Utah's suggestion of having photos of yourself in front of your house, along with photos of your driver's scans of your driver's license, ID, your rental contract. If you have to evacuate an area, oftentimes you can't get back into your home or where you live without proof of residence, uh, especially in the early stages of a disaster, right? Because one of the things you always hear about people are looting an insert name of town that has been struck by whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want critical personal, household, medical, and financial information. Um, you know, your homeowner's insurance, your health insurance, information on your prescriptions, if you have critical prescription medicines that you need, um, your contacts list. Because if your phone gets damaged, lost, or stolen, a lot of us, like, I can call my wife. And I'm sure someone else's phone number I remember. But, you <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. There's probably 400 phone numbers in my phone, right? Uh, and something people don't really think about is valuables, um, family photos. If you have family photos that you are just going to be heartbroken if they disappear, scan them while you still have access to them. Yeah, uh, people yeah. talk about memorable letters, documents, um, and also photographing things that you'll need for insurance. That's one way to verify that you had something in your possession. You should also be talking to your insurance company and understanding what you're actually insured for long before something terrible happens. Uh, it's one of the things like in California, you don't get earthquake insurance with your homeowner's insurance. It's a separate thing. We could talk about this for years because insurance companies are complicated. Um, you know, 
doing this early is much better than later. Uh, you know, people don't think about it, but having cash, a little stash of small bills, not a fat roll of hundreds, uh, is incredibly <laughs> not as, useful. That is useful. Can you break a yeah. hundred right now in this post natural disaster no, situation? Yeah. But it's, you know, even if it's like, you know, if electrical goes out, there are places that will let you pay cash, but they will not have access to say the ability to run your credit card. Right. Um, you know, I try to never let still like, no matter where I live, I try not to let my tank ever get below halfway because if, if there is an emergency evacuation situation, you might not have, you know, fuel may be out or you might not have, you know, electricity to refuel your car. Something that's been poking up recently, I want to remind people of, especially if you're in one of the areas that's been hit really hard lately, expect scams. Uh, be careful who you share things with. You know, you are going to find, you know, all of the all of the terrible places that people scam now, text messages, robocalls, phone calls, yeah. emails, um, you know, scammers may re out, reach out to you through social media. You know, this is, sounds silly, but the government will not call or text you about owing money or, you know, what you need to give us your bank information now so we can send you your payment. No, mm -hmm. FEMA is not. It's not the way FEMA works. Um, you know some like three big takeaways for this disaster prep is not just for other folks um because anybody can have a house burned to the ground and the best time to start preparing for things going wrong is now um two when you're thinking along with your your go bag or your kits or your emergency supply think about critical personal household medical and financial info that you will need to set things to right or move forward after this disaster passes and it's time to deal with the mess. Um, you know, don't forget your contacts and seriously scan any photo you don't want to lose. It's if you have them online backed up, you will be able to recreate them in the future. And, you know, online backup is outstanding, right? Because it's not where you are. Uh, but think about what you might need relatively immediately or copies of in hand to deal with homeowners or car insurance or a hospital far from home. Uh, you know, if you need to show proof of residence to a law enforcement to get back to your house to figure out what's left, uh, you know, or dealing with a branch of your bank. And hey, um, having dealt with any of a number of terrifying weather incidents, uh, you know, over the years, deep cleansing breaths, you got this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I know, I know there's a good section of our audience who are like, yep, I, I've, I'm on that. Uh, and so I'll, I'll throw one other in there. Make sure you keep an up, updated, uh, yeah. my go bag and all my emergency prep. I, I reevaluate on daylight saving changes forward or back nice. every year, just, just to make sure like, oh, is that, did you change insurance? Cause if you got the old insurance in the go bag, you need to put in the new insurance and stuff like exactly. that, as well as all your other stuff. Thank you, Patrick. That's good. Good information. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's check the mailbag before we're out of here. Jess wrote, uh, in your discussion of the removal of line judges at Wimbledon, you questioned how well does this work? And I would say it has performed very well at the U.S. and Australian Open tournaments for the last few years. Seems to be instantaneous, as quick as a line judge. I like it a lot, and the players seem to be okay with it. Thank you for these kinds of stories and all the great work you do, Sarah, Roger, and Tom. Thank you, Jess. Uh, good. Yeah. I, I had forgotten that I have actually seen this, uh, when I've watched tennis, uh, until <laughs> Jess pointed it out. And, uh, I guess that's a good sign that it didn't stick out in my mind. It means it's, it's working well. So appreciate that, Jess. Very good. Let's look in on Len Peralta and find out what he has drawn for us for daily tech news show today. Len, what's going on? I really like the, uh, sorry guys. I really like the, um, uh, Talk about robots. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. No, guys. you're good. Um, but, uh, or I'm sorry. Uh, I like the talk about uh, backup and things like that. Oh my gosh. It's just the robots go to are the, coming. Uh, just go to the video. There we go. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Len, Len has drawn what the uh, cyber cab will end up looking like. Uh, it looks like you've got a car it's with terrifying. Elon Musk's face. Yes, it is uh, Musk powered. So, uh, yeah. Um, if you're interested in this, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len. You can get this immediately, or you can get it the old fashioned way. Go to my online store. Uh, purchase something uh, from me because uh, I just purchased a brand new mixer during the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you let needs your commissions. <laughs> yes. So I apologize for the, uh, for the bad sound. I last week it was the mic. Now we know it's, it's the, the mixer. mixer. Yeah. So, Cause you got yeah. a new mic. Uh, what mixer did you end up with? 
I, you know, I just rent, I just went with back with the Alessis again. The Alessis. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah Alessis. Gotcha. Nice. So. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, thank you, Len. Uh, and thank you, Patrick Norton. Uh, if people want to keep up with what you're doing these days, where should they go? Well, in honor of our discussion of Blue Sky earlier, you can find me at patricknorton.bsky.social. And of course, I'm still hanging around on X at Patrick Norton. And uh, yeah, that's the bulk of where you can find me on the internets, on the Lovely. socials. Lovely. I uh, also want to thank Jerry, who became our 150th follower of the Ooh. DTNS LinkedIn page, which on the shoulders of the 149 giants who followed us before him, allowed okay. us to stream live on LinkedIn. So we streamed live on LinkedIn for the first in today. Uh, if you uh, are a LinkedIn fan and that's where you like uh, viewing stuff, you can go watch us there now. Uh, also, top five, new top five is out. And this week, I'm counting down the top five tech terms that became came genericized. Roger did some digging uh, to find out there's more than just Xerox and Google out there. You can catch that at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, DTNS Picks on Instagram, and YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. Patrons, stick around for the extended show. It's Friday Quiz Day. We're going to test everyone's knowledge of weather on other planets. So become a patron if you're not already and join us to play along. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hey, there we go. You can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're off Monday for a U.S. holiday, but we'll be back on Tuesday. See you then. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer, Joe Kuntz. Producer at large, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackerman. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scottis One. BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama. Paul Reese, Matthew J. Steve aka Gadget Virtuoso and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows include Nika Monford, Chris Christensen, Scott Johnson, Justin Robert Young, and Patrick Norton. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. <laughs> <laughs>